Florida State embarrasses Miami in front of a national audience, in front of tons of recruits. Let's hear their reactions. What's going on, on Nation? It's CJ Wilson, the Roll Up Network, here to talk about the FSU Miami game and the reactions that followed after. But of course, before we get started, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to our channel. It does a world of favors for us in regards to getting our information out there to the right people. So go ahead and hit this like button and subscribe to the channel. Well, <laughs> it was total domination, 45 to 3. We went down to uh, Miami Gardens and handled business in Doak South. Um, it was a dominating performance from start to finish for FSU. It was a pretty good atmosphere. I can't lie to you, man. The Miami fans did come out uh, for the first five minutes of the game, but once we, we never really, we, we never really gave the, the fans a chance to get into the game. The first series, you know, we had the big shot, the uh, Pokey Wilson with Jordan Travis. After that, it was just pretty much just complete domination. They couldn't do anything in regards to offense. I think we knew that coming into the game. Miami struggled on offense. They haven't been scoring any touchdowns, and they haven't played the defense, quite frankly, as um, athletic or as big or as fast as the ones we played against FSU. So we figured that we would do what we need to do defensively. Um, the quarterback situation was up in the air with Tyler Van Dyke. He did give it a try, even though I don't think he should have played in that game. That's a different story. But um, nevertheless, his shoulder was not ready, and we, there was a quarterback shuffle of uh, Ja'Cory Brown and, um, and uh, Jake Garcia. Uh, so in regards to that game, Just sitting back thinking, fam. We, we, we really dominated. We did everything we were supposed to do, especially all the talk we heard going into the game, um, you know, thanking us for, for the fourth or fourth team, things like that. It's just something we need to do. Uh, dominate a bad football team, something that we haven't done. Well, we did it against Boston College, but it's something we need to do as far as being better and just moving forward as a team, completing, how can I put this, Never had, not having these lapses. So in past games, we, we, we'll, we'll look good for three quarters or two quarters, and then we'll go null and, null and void for like the, the remainder of the game or whatever quarter we're in. We just we have inconsistent play within the team where we have quarters that we miss and play within this game. We dominated from start to finish. They they understood the assignment and also just the aspect of the game, right? It's a big rivalry game. You dominate this team, this opponent on the road in the big recruiting ground in South Florida that it is. You know, it's just something that you can do to showcase your offense and do things that you – you know, want to do as far as a rivalry and, and, and pretty much just step on Miami, which we did. Uh, Jordan Travis only completed 12. Well, he only attempted 12 passes, but he was really efficient through the air over 200 yards or 300, uh, excuse me, over 200 yards to three passing touchdowns. But the show was really the Trey, um, the Trey Benson show on the Lawrence to a Philly show. The running backs put on, the, um, put on a clinic down in Miami, especially Trey Benson, who had 15 carries, 228 yards and two touchdowns. Um, I know he's leading the country in broken tackles per carry. But, um, again, you was able to see that on full display against Miami. Um, just a physical runner. The guys couldn't tackle him. The first guy, uh, the first defender bouncing off from left and right, things like that. So, he did his thing. And then Lawrence Toa Philly had a 227 total yards. I want to talk about him for a second. He's been pretty much the unsung hero of, of our offense. Um, he does everything. He's a jack of all, jack of all trades. You know, the, the love goes to Trey Benson, Jordan Travis, Johnny Wilson, things like that. And rightfully so. Not taking away anything from those guys, but... One of the most important pieces of our offense is Lawrence Toy Philly. Um, so that's just want to give him a little bit of flowers and get that recognition now because he he does everything for us in regards to uh, run, running the football. He run, he's run a lot harder than he did last year. The passing game, we see what the, what, what the mismatch he is in regards to um, getting the mismatch on linebackers, defensive linemen, sometimes uh, safeties rather on those real route, wheel routes. So just the way we use Lawrence Toy Philly, I feel like he's a, a X factor for FSU. And something that is kind of going unnoticed in regards to the production due to how good we are offensively. But uh, yeah, Lawrence Toa Philly is another uh, uh, had another big game. We're speaking of Lawrence Toa Philly and, and Trey Benson. You know, it's been a running back to FSU being recruiting with uh, Cedric Baxter, right? So this is pretty much the third straight game he, he he's taken into in regards to FSU. He saw the uh, Clemson game in which we ran over 200 yards on Clemson, the Georgia Tech game, which we put on the show running the football, and of course the Miami game, which we put on another show. So it's it's um, it's a pattern on both ends. Um, the pattern is on one end, you have Trey Benson with three straight visits um, in regards to FSU game. And on the other end, within those three straight visits, FSU is dominating the football, running the ball, and just showcasing the running backs in different ways we get them the ball. So that's a good thing. Um, I want to speak about the game plan. FSU kept it very vanilla versus Miami and still dominated. So in regards to that, we only threw the ball 12 times, like I said. And it was an interesting quote by... Um, 
Florida, excuse me, Miami's defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, in regards to the play selection that we had against Miami, right? So we ran, I'm sorry, give me a second, guys, putting the stat right now. We ran... We ran 70 plays against Miami, right? Within 70 plays, we ran 32 of the same play, which is a, a, a variation of the counter play. We all know that that's been something that's, that's been very deadly for us in regards to the running game this past season. So 32 carries, I'm excuse me, 32 plays rather out of 70 snaps just shows you that we did what we wanted to against Miami. We saw the weakness. We just ran the football. Uh, we ran it multiple times within different formations, the same play. So pretty much the same type of game plan we had against the, uh, Duquesne. Uh, just the better team won, put it that way. We had better athletes across the board. We had the better players. We had the more hungrier players. And we just dominated them from start, from start to finish. So 45-3, uh, to three, um, empty stadium in, in Doak South, around middle of the second quarter. Things started looking like a regular Miami home game in regards to the attendance. Pretty much everyone is out, and all you heard was the war chant going around within the stadium. So it was very, very beautiful to see. Just total domination and interceptions on defense. Let's talk about the defense. The defense gave up less than 200 total yards against Miami. Um, just did what they wanted to. Uh, secondary, linebackers, defensive lineman, Jerry Verse, he had a night getting after the quarterback. Um, yeah, we just did everything we wanted to. Jamie Robinson, he's proven that he's, he's, he's the best safety in, in, in the state of Florida. And it wasn't even a debate to begin with. But he had a dominating game as well. So, shot caps, caps off to the defense at Adam Fuller and things like that. So, going back to the recruiting aspect of it, you have Cedric Baxter who was on campus. He's a guy that's recruiting very hard in regards to the running back room, right? Let's talk about Jalen Brown for a second. He's another guy we're recruiting. He came to the game, but the interesting part about the game, he wasn't there on the uh, Miami recruiting list. He came as, a, as an actual fan of the game. So, we've been recruiting him pretty hard the last – well, not the last. We've been on him pretty hard for the last couple of years. Uh, the conversations, even though he's committed to LSU, the conversations haven't slowed down in, in anything like that. And there is interest within FSU. Now, I know LSU is winning a lot of football games right now, beating Alabama. So it's going to be a tough flip. But it's something to monitor moving forward. Jalen Brown is very interested in Florida State. Uh, we'll see how those, how those things plays out. I know he wanted to see produ um, positive production on the field this year, which we have done. So if we continue to win on the field, look out for a visit for Jalen Brown. Now, if he does visit, Things then we'll pay a little bit more attention to it in regards to how serious it could be. But yeah, if he does visit, that'd be something to keep an eye out in regards to Jalen Brown, four-star receiver, a speedster, track guy, 100, 200 meter. He's the type of guy you know. FSU leads the country in in explosive plays, plays over 20 yard, 20 yards or more, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. He's the type of guy that fits within that Mike Norvell mold of. Um, a play uh, offense built for playmakers, right? Jalen Brown is a speedster. If you put the ball in his hands, good things will happen. So we'll see how those things play out in regards to the rest of his recruitment. If he does wind up taking an official visit to FSU, things could get interesting. So circling back to Cedric Baxter, three straight visits, uh, running back still dominating. He did say he'll be back on campus for an official, not excuse me, not official visit. He already took official visit to Georgia Tech, but he said he will be back on campus. For an unofficial visit, you know, right there in Edge, or Orlando, Florida, Edgewater High School, so it's not far of a drive. So if he, we, he, if we get back, if he, if we get him back on campus, excuse me, there's uh, more positive news for that recruitment. I already feel good about that recruitment as of now, but if we get him back on campus. Um, yeah, you can kiss the baby. Moving on to uh, the quarterback position, a lot of people was uh, talking about, you know, what is the FSU going to do at quarterback? And to be honest with you, we're still kind of up in the air. But it's some names to keep an eye, keep an eye out on, right? You have Miami commit Emory Williams, who is also at the game. Uh, Three-star quarterback who's from Milton, Florida, right in the panhandle. So not far from Tallahassee. He was at the game. FSU had recently offered him, and we, we went and, and, and Coach Tony Tozart went to go see him throw live when he went to go to, to one of his games. So that's something to monitor as well, the communication with that, how things uh, progress. Uh, just just watch. I feel like interest could pick up on both sides so we can see if an official visit is scheduled um, in the near future. But that is something to watch in regards to a three-star quarterback commit of Miami, Emory Williams, who was at the game. FSU is still recruiting him and going at him pretty hard. We'll just see how hard down the stretch. And speaking of, uh, you know, recruiting and things like that, let's kind of move forward to uh, current some current players on the roster. I know some news around Sam McCall putting out um, an Instagram story, if I'm not mistaken, um, a decommitment, not a decommitment, a, a, a 
notice saying that he was going to enter the portal or things like that. Then he kind of deleted the post and walked it back, jumping the gun, said, no, nation, things are all good. Uh, it's natural for freshmen to kind of feel this way. The, the the big difference now between now and the past, because I can speak from experience myself. I mean, I was I was a freshman at one point in time and it was it was a point where, hell, I was thinking about transferring. And, and had transfer thoughts and just wasn't really happy with where I was on the depth chart. I had other freshmen um, that, that came in with me. And then even with, throughout my years of college, you know, it's, it's a never in the cycle of what we call the freshman blues, right? Freshmen get there, they're thinking, you know, hey, I'm supposed to get this, I'm supposed to get that. It doesn't happen like that because it's a process in regards to college. And people, freshmen, kids, they're just not ready to do things off, off the rip in regards to getting right on campus and just into the grind and being that guy that it was in high school so it's a little bit of a humbling experience and just a learning curve for the freshman in regards to understanding the process and how things go um, I was a part of it and I seen it moving move, moving along down my career and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people within the FSU community was the same way um, I, I put a tweet on, a tweet out on Twitter about it and James Coleman kind of uh, commented on it in regards to hey I know some former knows when I was there who were pretty much out the door but ended up staying and they became, you know, all conference players, all American players that got drafted pretty high in the draft. So things like that happen. Uh, freshmen do feel that way and go through go through that and have those feelings. The difference now is, you know, they have they have the uh, the social media access to express those feelings uh, instantly. So that's just the difference now is it, you have to just be cognizant of that in regards to, you know, stuff you put out in, in the timing of timing of the things you put out in regards to the messages you can you can put out with, with your words because you know emotions like I what her her members always say, you know, don't tweet if you're gonna delete or something like that. Um just take a step back and check your emotions and, and, and talk to your family and things like that. But but don't really how can I put this? Don't freak out or 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 go overboard with, the, with with kids like this because you know it's, it's just natural emotions in regards to true to, to true freshmen. Kids in general is just natural emotions. Also, if they do decide in the portal and and do leave, that's they feel like that's the best decision for them. This is a new a new day, a new game in regards to you know hitting the portal, um, and hitting the portal and going to different schools. If we're going to be receptive of 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 kids coming to FSU from the portal. We got to be receptive of kids leaving FSU and and and, and uh, trying to figure out the best thing from us. It's just it's just the nature of the beast right now and what we have to deal with now, FSU fans. But again, I do want to say um, these kids, especially true freshmen, man, they 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 go through a variety of emotions, especially after you know a big rivalry game against the in-state rival, that type of deal, and you don't really play in that game. I can understand the feeling. Um, been there before. I know a lot of people in the past have been there before as well. So it's natural. But again, no nation. We're sitting at six and three right now. We have Syracuse's upcoming weekend in Louisiana after that. Then we have the um, the uh, Friday night game against the University of Florida. So it's a lot of positive momentum going right now. Let's close out this season on a good note and focus on the recruiting um, and going to the going to the bowl season with um, with another win. No nation. We haven't been to a bowl in a long time. So I, I'm feeling really good about this season in regards to the uh, end prospects of the season. So let's just see how it plays out. It's your boy CJ Wilson with the Roll Up Network. Again, make sure you guys like and subscribe to this video. Go Nose.